sound of raindrops begins to pour all around. Um, people are stopped in their tracks and the, the, the sky is growing kind of a, a grayish color. And almost as if in like a dramatic sense, um, you see the detective, Detective Banana Butt, facing away from you, actually, facing away from the whole crowd that you're standing in. And he's standing and he's looking up at something kind of perched at the top of one of the marble towers that make up this city. It's hard to see with the awnings in your way and the people in your way, but just murmurs of people, gasps, and you do see the detective just looking up. Um, he's He's got his hat off and he's kind of holding on to his hat right now. What do you guys want to do? You can't quite see. You'd have to walk out of the market next to the detective to be able to look up and see what he's looking at. You can also ask people around you if you don't want to walk out into the open. He hasn't seemed to notice you. Hmm. <laughs> I don't remember Banana Bud Jones. So I maybe I, I was I don't think you were here for the very last session that we did. Um, but Leanna just hung around oh, and... and uh, really? I'm so sorry. I thought... I didn't know we had... No, that's okay. That's all right. No worries. But you've got the whole recap. You, you've, you've gotten everything. So if you have any questions, you let me know. He's just... Uh, he's a simian detective who was put on the case to find Prince Lawrence, who you killed. And uh, he was very, like... Like... Um, no bullshit. Uh, he, was, he was not playing any games with R. Um... He asked nicely to see the basement, and R said, you better come back with a warrant because you inconvenienced me. Uh, and he said, I will, and he never did. Um, so you're not sure what that means. You haven't really talked to him since. You haven't seen him since until just now. Uh, but the people are all kind of standing around. People are coming out from behind their market stalls, and they're all um, kind of peeking around the awning, wiping the rain off their face as they're looking up at something at the at, like kind of perched on the top of one of the the marble towers, but you guys can't really see past the uh, the awnings that are above above you, these tarps that are keeping the market dry. I say we just go look at it. Yeah, I, I think so too. Okay. I'm, I'm going to hang back a bit. All right. I don't like banana, but... Right. <laughs> yeah, you know that he's he's got your number right now, so... Yeah. Um, the rest of you kind of take a step up to look underneath the awnings. You see a somewhat familiar character, one that's um, not super familiar, but one you've seen before. Um, go ahead and roll me history checks. Uh, Esme, Liana, and Juniper. What check? History check. So that'll be in the long oh. box in the middle of your uh, character sheet, like the middle left of your character sheet. Mm -hmm. So we got a four from Liana. Liana, you weren't really paying attention. In fact, I don't even know if you were there when, when oh, the, nice. this character was was there anyway. Nice, Juniper with a natural 20 to come back. First roll, coming back, natural 20. Esme. Oh, yours is 11, I see it. All right. <laughs> All right, um, Esme and Leanna, hard to tell from this distance, but Juniper, you remember this person. Um, they're not wearing their marble armor, but this is Vincent, the vampire, who said that he was going to take care of this problem for you. Um, he said he was going to get the detective off your trail. He seemed very, um, attached to R. He seemed like he was, like, her subservient, like, minion, almost. Um, he seemed like a pretty nice guy, just in terms of what you're trying to do. Um, obviously he was going to kill somebody, but he was going to do it for you. Uh, mm -hmm. he's decapitated. Uh, part of his body is strung up, kind of pieced together, uh, dismembered part, parts of his body are almost um, stapled, not, not stapled, but with a metal, like a metal rod through them stuck to this marble statue about 40 feet up from where you're at. Uh, and you can tell that it's Vincent because his head is on its own little pike at the very tip of this tower. What? There's no blood, just his body parts. Um, kind of 
stabbed and piked around this the tip of this marble tower, uh, made into a display. Um, as you guys walk up, uh, Detective Banana Bet kind of looks back. He sees you, raises an eyebrow, and then looks back up at the uh, at the guard. He says, "Horrible, isn't it?" Um, disgusting, disgusting. What? When the, can can we ask when they found this? Yeah, um, you can. So, um, what do you what do you say to the detective? Do you just ask him that ex- that exact question, or do you want to? Um, I'll ask. How long has the body been here? Uh, he he says. We've only just noticed it after the market opened. Curious, no blood. Wouldn't have seen it if we didn't look up. No blood. So are we thinking of Vamp? Could have done that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my god, that's so gross. <laughs> Vampire, hmm? An interesting idea. What made you think that? There's no blood. Hmm. Yes. We'll have to retrieve the body parts. Hmm. So what are you thinking it might be then? Hmm. No, nothing. Nothing. He uh, uh, closes up his little notebook thing that he's uh, he's got in his hand. He's kind of just had it hanging there open, um, just like by his side, staring up at this thing. Uh, he closes it. Go ahead and roll me a perception check, Esme. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> As he shuts the notebook, you're, you're not able to quite see um, what he wrote inside. Um but you do see uh, a mix of letters of which I'll put in the chat here. You see uh, these letters strewn, strewn about the page. I-P-E-V-M. As he shuts it, he notices you just out of the corner of his eye kind of looking at his notebook that he's putting away. I remember you. It's uh, been a while. You were at the incident at the club. Uh, oh, like all those uh, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Yes, months ago, actually. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> even, even longer. Is your other friend with you, R... He looks back into the crowd. R, are you visible in the crowd, or are you trying to hide? Probably not. I'm probably, like, trying to inconspicuously, like, sit and, like, pretend like I don't really... I I, I don't see. (laughs) Okay, roll me a stealth check. (laughs) (laughs) The five. Yeah. (laughs) Yikes. He looks back I'm into the sure crowd. <laughs> he he does see you, um, and he puts his hat back on his head, covering himself up from the rain. It starts tip tapping off the top of his hat. Um, as he looks at you, are uh, he just kind of tilts his head and raises an eyebrow at you, and uh, the I just crowd look at him very stoically, like I don't, I don't give him anything, and then I I, I wander off towards the club. <laughs> the crowd watches you as you leave, um, and then he. Uh, he turns back to Esme, Juniper, and Liana, who are kind of standing nearest to him. Um, and he says, Well, are you going to follow her? Or do you have more questions? It seems that she's leaving. Mm, yeah, we should, we should probably get out of here, guys. I agree. Uh, the... Detective waves his finger in a circle, and as he does, a group of guards come out and begin climbing up the marble tower using the inside stairwell inside the tower. They begin marching up 
to retrieve the body parts of Vincent. Uh, and he says, uh, as you guys are walking away, you hear the detective as he says, Vampires, curious thoughts. Would hate to see one of those things get anyone near you. Hey, wait, what? <laughs> um, can we go back a second and repeat that? What did you mean by that? The uh, detective kind of looks at you and smirks. He takes out a cigarette and lights it. You're cool. <laughs> you may be hanging with the wrong crowd, Paladin. Ooh. Okay, we're leaving. Can I like sashay away like really fast? Yeah. Like I can't handle this anymore. Yeah. We're gonna come back and kill him. But I tell that to the girls. <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm just gonna follow Leanna, because what the fuck? <laughs> all right. As you all rush back to catch up with R, R, you're walking towards the club, and you hear footsteps approaching quickly behind. As you kind of just glance, you see your girls approaching. Like, kind of slow up a bit, but then wait for them to catch up, but I'm then I, like quicken my pace and I kind of like in a hushed tone to them I'm like uh this is bad this is a direct attack on me and my my own and there will be repercussions for this is there anything we can do well we have to find out who killed Vincent you know how hard it is to get one of us into their little gang it's difficult that's scary Mm, I think we can figure something out we just need to know more about these people Blend in a little True. bit. Maybe Bertram's heard anything. <sighs> so you head back to the club. Mm -hmm. um, Bertram is actually waiting on the front steps. He's uh, he's kind of sitting next to the uh, the opening. He's smoking his own cigarette underneath the, the little uh, cover that's above the door to keep the rain from getting in. Um, and as you're approaching, he stands up and puts his cigarette out on the wall. Or, you all right? Vincent's been murdered quite publicly. Oh, that's not good. No. Do you know who did it? No, I was hoping you had heard anything. Well, I was wandering around the club yesterday night, and I saw him. He was here. And, uh, I thought I saw somebody else following him, kind of sticking to the shadows, but I couldn't leave my post to go check it out, and I figured he could handle himself. I had a weird feeling something bad was going to happen, though. Fuck, that sucks. I think it more than sucks. They've just taken out our only guard. Bit of an understatement. We can make another. Uh, maybe I just want this banana butt dude out of our business. He has such a stupid name. He how is he fuck. so good? <laughs> and I, I don't understand how he was even put in that post with that name. Honestly, <laughs> I, I would have been laughed out of the academy, I think. <laughs> maybe that shows just how strong he is. Well... Um. If it happened around the club, there has to be somebody who saw something. Maybe. Um, I did tell Esmeralda about it. So maybe you can ask her. She's inside. Yeah. I suppose it's the only lead we have. <sighs> All right. So you guys head inside. The club is dark. Um, but as you walk in, uh, you see Esmeralda... Um, with kind of a, a lamp light reading a book at the bar um, and she uh, she sees you come in and she claps her hands twice and the lights turn on. Um, she uh, poses the book that she's reading. She kind of furrows her brow, wipes a little bit of 
uh, blood off of the corner of her lip uh, that she's been drinking from a, a glass that you can see in front of her. And she uh, looks at you all and she says, Oh, hello there. It's good to see you all again. Um, ah, we have something to discuss. That Vincent's death? Yes, how did you know? Uh, his body's in the market. Mm. I need a list of potentials in the force as soon as possible. You went to the market, did you? Yes. Oh. I need to know who killed Vincent. Did you see anything? I did not, but I did hear something. I heard that the detective was near the the uh, club last night, and I heard that he was in a drunken stupor. I actually laughed when somebody told me that. You think he killed Vincent? I don't know about that. I don't think the detective could kill Vincent. That seems ridiculous. He's just a monkey. Mm. That's mm. what they said on Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> Not in character, obviously. <laughs> no, it's okay. Esmeralda, Esmeralda seems very, like, you know, um, she seems very elitist. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. I think he knows too much, and I think we need to take care of the problem. Well, I, uh, I'll do whatever you need me to do. It's, it's not a problem, but um, I will say that um, that detective is he's not going to be easy to take care of. I kind of like look at the girls and I'm like well, what, do you, what do you think we should do? Should we should we kill him? Should we I don't know. Hmm. Turn him into a vampire monkey? I... Oh wait, that sounds actually really fun and can we keep him as like a pet maybe? Or like <laughs> okay. kill him? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, the body doesn't have blood. I don't... I don't know if the detective is capable of that. Well, it kind I of think... seems like his body was moved after they killed him. <laughs> hmm. Kaylee's going to be here in minutes, so... Mm. You either take this downstairs into the VIP rooms, or somewhere else. Yeah. Shall we head downstairs? Yeah, yeah, we Down. should. Down. Down. I'll make sure to quell any rumors I hear at the club tonight, and uh, I'll also let you know if I hear anything different. Thank Thanks, you. Queen. <laughs> of course. She chugs the last bit of her blood from her cup and uh, washes it out in the little... A hand sink. And uh, where are you guys headed? I guess uh, downstairs. Okay. As you head downstairs, um, you go down to the kind of like underbelly of the club, uh, which is empty. There's nobody down there at the moment. Um, as you get down there, your, uh, your meat locker is slightly ajar, a little bit of light coming from it. So I head towards it to see. Okay. As you head towards it, uh, how, what, what kind of heading towards it are you doing? Probably as quietly as possible, just in case someone's in there. Okay, roll me a stealth check. Okay. Uh... You guys see R slow down and sneak her way towards the um, meat oh, I'm locker. So <laughs> the, the stealth not happening at the moment. <laughs> as you're walking um just the the slight voices from you talking and the footsteps um you got pretty close to it without before realizing that it was even there like before it was even open um and as you kind of approach you see uh there's nobody inside you don't hear anybody inside you look inside there's nobody in there um but you see in the frost on the ground you see footsteps um you see one of the giant pig carcasses kind of laying on its side on the ground where it definitely 
would not normally be put should be hanging from one of the hooks. Um, you see uh, one of the pig carcasses cut open, um, and obviously there's no bleeding happening, but just like a lot of um, like almost viscera having like somebody somebody who's basically searched through the pig carcass, um, like they were looking for something. Um, so one on the ground, one ripped open. Um, and then footsteps all over the, uh, the freezer. And then it looks like somebody left in a hurry because you can still see some of the watermarks from the frost on their feet, uh, kind of trailing off towards, uh, one of the exits down here. Make a little, uh, investigation check to see, like, if I can ascertain, like, how fresh these are and, like, if there's anything else here. Yeah, roll me investigation check. Dang. Why am I roll so shit? What the fuck? No. <laughs> um, so one thing I do as a as a DM is I kind of allow if you want to spend extra time doing this, if you want to spend mm-hmm. like a total of ten minutes investigating, you can just I mean, get I've got a twenty on it. To do. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. So um, just keep that in mind, guys. If you have time to do something, like you have ten minutes, you think that your characters would have ten minutes to be able to do something, you can just take a nice roll on it. Like you can take. You don't even need to roll on it. You just say, Commander, we're going to spend 10 minutes doing it so that we can see what happened or get the most information. So uh, in this case, with the investigation check, what information are you looking for again? Uh, I'm I'm kind of trying to ascertain, like, if, like, how, like, if the person's still here, like, how ah. long ago, and also, like, if there's anything else that indicate, like, what, what they were looking for. Okay. So with the temperature down here, just in the basement level of your, of your, um, club it's always pretty cold down here already um so these footsteps and the like water droplets that are left outside of the meat locker could have been left anywhere between an hour to a day ago um it's it's unsure because um they wouldn't have evaporated with the amount of cold that's down here um they could have just melted um so it's hard to tell exactly how long ago this was Um, but one thing that you can tell is that, uh, whoever was down here had some kind of, um, they had some kind of mission that they were on. Um, whatever it was, they seemed to have been rushed through it and had to leave immediately. Um, and you're not sure... Uh, who it is, the the size of feet, I can tell you with the investigation check, the size of feet are a somewhat large humanoid size. So, like, um, definitely something that is bipedal, a.k.a. walks on two legs, um, something that has fairly large feet, um, but just unsure. I mean, they look like shoe marks, so they're wearing shoes of some kind. It's just, like, one person. Mm -hmm. Just one person, it seems. Okay. Uh, Is there any staff down here? with us um bertram is kind of like wandering around near where the the stairwell is to go up to the next level um he is not like following you though he's letting you do your thing he's just kind of stocking things and walking around so you could call out for him he'd hear, he'd hear yeah, you like uh bertram yeah well what's up There's, someone's been in here and what they're doing weird things to the pigs i don't i don't know let me see he kind of stomps his way over. Um, as he's stomping, roll me a perception check. Mm. Anyone can roll this one, too. This is a group perception check. Anyone who's there can roll it. No. Oh. <laughs> can more of us roll? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, so we got 11, we got 16. Oh, my gosh, that two 20s and two rolls? My oh, God. my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm just Damn. sick. Just yeah. built like that, like no biggie. <laughs> All right, so um, looking through uh, Juniper, you're easily able to tell, and Liana, you can both tell, uh, that the footsteps made here are definitely not Bertram's. Although they are large like Bertram's, they're definitely not his. Uh, just based on the shoe that you're looking at and the size of his feet, Bertram's feet are much bigger, and the shoe is a uh, totally different make. So um, you you two are easily able to to rule Bertram out of ha- having done this. Um, so as he's uh, as he's coming up, he does seem nervous. He, he almost has a bit of a um, like a 
And he's just got like this nervous energy about him uh, as he as he walks into the freezer. And he says, "Oh shit! Oh come on! Yeah, it's all oh, this. Shit. You're not doing your job properly. It seems." He nervously kind of rubs the back of his neck. I, this has never happened before. Honestly, I don't even know how it could have happened. Uh, let me go check the. Uh, let me go check the locks. He goes to the back exit, uh, of which the footsteps kind of trail off towards. He goes to that back exit, and uh, he says, "Locks are intact. Uh, nothing. No lock picking happening here. Plus, they wouldn't have been able to lock pick these anyway. So someone had." Access. It's one of us. So he uh, he kind of raises an eyebrow. It's been a while since you opened this place. How many people have access? I can think of a handful. You, obviously. Esmeralda. I don't think Vincent would have access. Um, roll me a, roll me a history check. Okay. You're unsure, wow. but, um, Why? you could ask Bertram. <laughs> uh, did Vincent have access? Vincent, 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 Vincent. Oh, fuck, yeah, I did give Vincent access. He's one of the guards. He needed it. Okay, give me a full list of who had access. Bertram gives you a list of people, um, of which the ones that stand out are your main crew and Vincent. The rest don't seem of interest in this particular case. It's a very small list. But because Vincent was on the guard, it made sense for him to have access to be able to to delete evidence, aka, you know, destroy evidence or take evidence or those kinds of things. I can, like, turn to Bertram and I'm like, listen, if we have a rat, uh, they'll need to be dealt with. Keep the guard up. I'll go talk to Esmeralda about this. I won't let this happen again, I promise. Yeah, you don't want this to happen again. He, he scratches, like, the back of his neck and, and nervously walks off and then kind of hustles up the steps. Um. Oh, no. <laughs> One second. Okay, I think we're good. All right. Um. So, uh, with that said... You have a bit of a lead in terms of it being, uh, ha having something to do with maybe Vincent's, uh, access key. Um, it, it definitely could have been his, probably was his. Um, him being dead means anyone could have it at this point. You're not sure who. Um, but there are a few different ways you can go. One is you can track down any guards and see what they know about Vincent. Uh, two... You can do your own investigation, um, try and kind of sneak around and um, figure out what uh, his path was like last night by asking uh, some of the different bar keeps and things around the uh, the area, seeing if they've seen him. Um, you can go head on and face uh, Detective Banana Butt and ask him some questions yourself. Um, you could try and sneak around and try and find out what Mr. Banana Butt knows. Uh you could wait it out and see what happens. There's a lot of options you could do here. It seems like whatever they were looking for in the freezer, they didn't find. Yeah. I guess we... I mean, I kind of look to the, the gang. I'm like, uh, I don't know how stealthy you, you all are, but I suggest we maybe talk to the staff about what they, they've seen. And I should probably tell uh, Esmeralda to get all of these locks changed because if Banana Bot has Vincent's key, that's an issue. So we should go talk to staff and see who's around. Uh, yeah, who's around? So you got Kaylee, Esmeralda, Bertram, 
And then uh, you do have one other guard um, who's kind of like Bertram's trainee. And his name's Luke. He is uh, lizard folk. Uh, he's got like a big blue mohawk. Um, he doesn't talk much. He does his work and uh, he does it well. At this point, R would probably be thinking, dang, maybe Luke is better off being the lead at this point. If Because uh, just based on what you've seen from Luke, he's very no-nonsense. Maybe Bertram's a little too comfortable. You're not sure. but. Ooh, I think we should talk to Luke. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So you go track down Luke. Luke is standing at the front. Kind of, um, the people are starting to line up for the club. Um, as you know, this place gets really popular. And uh, people are just starting to get ready to be first in line to get in. That's uh, um, starting that... Uh, it's, I mean... I guess I'm kind of skipping ahead in my own brain. It probably wouldn't be that late yet. Um, it'd probably be about time for uh, the rest of your staff, though, to start showing up and, like, making preparations, you know, uh, cleaning things up, making sure everything's uh, set to go for the night. Um, so Kaylee would be there. Um, and, yeah, Luke, Luke would probably be wandering around, like taking out trash and like doing things like that, like menial tasks. Um, so when you cut, when you catch Luke, he's walking through the main hall in front of the bar where Kaylee's um, cleaning some cups and uh, he's got a big trash bag over his shoulder and he doesn't seem to pay you any mind as he's, as he's walking. He doesn't seem to, um, obviously he doesn't know what's going on. So what do you do? How do you get his attention? Fang, thank you so much for the raid. What do you want to do, R? Wave him over. Yeah, he immediately stops, like almost, almost like he was instinctively watching you out of the corner of his eye. He sets his bag down, walks over to you. Yeah, uh, what can I do for you, R? Uh, I don't know if you're already aware, but Vincent is dead, and we had a little intruder in our basement last night. He raises an eyebrow, and uh, his lizard folk mouth kind of opens up with a, uh, like an exasperated, like, huh. And he starts kind of picking at his fang, his vampire fang. Oh, I see. Uh, Vincent's dead. What exactly do you think happened? I don't know, but it was a direct message for us. He, they posed his body in the marketplace, whoever it was. Ah, uh, that's what that was. Uh, yes, and I think we need to change the locks downstairs because I imagine his key has gone with him. That's probably true. Uh, we should definitely do that then. Yeah, mm. um, I'll, uh, I'll let Esmeralda know when I see her. Uh, do you uh, see anything? I, I, Esmeralda said she thought that the detective was uh, drunk and maybe following Vincent. I uh, had my eye on him last night. He uh, he went around the the club a few times, actually. Uh, he did seem a bit drunk. I didn't talk to him, obviously. Uh, it wouldn't be a good idea, but uh, I did see him. And uh, I don't thinking about it. He's going to roll a history check. I don't think I saw Vincent, but I definitely saw the detective. And I uh, actually... Kind of laughed. It was funny. He looked pathetic. Seems like he couldn't get a search warrant, so maybe searched himself. I. I don't know. Do you think so? He. I mean, what do you know about him? I know a little bit about him. What do you know about the the detective? He's a persistent bastard. That's what I know about him. Yeah, he is. He smells. He does smell. <laughs> yeah, it's um. It's not like him to to want to get drunk, uh, from what I've seen. I've been in this city a long time. You think it's like him to murder Vincent? I don't think so. Uh, could be. I guess if he's pushed far enough. He might have uncovered something from Vincent, though. Um, and maybe Vincent uh, was punished for it. Do we have any, uh, 
any other in the guard? Do you know? We have no one else in the guard. I'm asking Esmeralda to bring up a list of potentials, but Vincent was our only, only man in. Well, one thing I can say is the detective is, as you said, ruthless, relentless, and he's a, he is a sad creature. You know, you know how he was made, right? No. Years ago, here in the city, it was a big thing. It was one of the part of the, one of the magic shows. He was just a regular chimpanzee, and then they magician gave him intelligence like that. Insane. Never seen it since. The no one's seen the magician either. Give him intelligence. Hmm. I'm just wondering if we could get rid of our issue by ungiving him intelligence. I'm not sure. But uh, what I can say is, uh, from from what I remember, sorry, I'm changing his accent, but I'm going to go with this one because I like this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I'm going to go with is that uh, I, uh, I mean, anything that's done can be undone, right? So maybe, uh, maybe you can, but you might need to find that uh, magician who did it. Now, that's a big ask because nobody's seen him. I mean, this, it's been 20 years. Longer than you've been here. He's nobody to fuck with. Look, look at the rest of the, the girls. I'm like, uh, what do you think we should do? Hmm. Okay, so... Who do we think most likely killed Vincent at the moment? I mean, the only lead we have is banana butt being drunk and if Vincent was trying to kill him it would make sense for him did did the I didn't really look did the body look like his like body was like ripped apart or cut um this would be a check for Esme Juniper and Leanna go ahead and roll me a retroactive perception check so um, we'll see what you remember based on your perception checks here. So roll me some perception checks. And if you roll high oh on your god. perception, you probably remember. <laughs> oh my god, you're cheating. Okay, how? <laughs> how? What? <laughs> what? The fuck? what? Wait, what? Uh, I think I'm hacking. You're hacking, bro. Wall hacks. Um all right, oh. Leanna. I'll say Leanna, Esme, and Juniper. Um with those combined rolls. What you remember from the body is it seems like it was ripped apart, less so, um, less so cut apart. Yes, Pixel, that is three nat 20s in a row. Okay, so, okay. But I don't understand why he would murder this guy out of just rage and then take the time to hide the body and put it on a little stick. I think, potentially, uh, Vincent tried to kill him while he was drunk and he used his crazy chimpanzee strength to rip him apart, maybe, and then, you know, pose the body as a warning to me. Uh, he, he's quite the persistent, you know, chimpanzee. I imagine he's angered by the fact that he can get a warrant for this place. That's so true, because then when he told me to be careful who I'm hanging out with, maybe he was talking about you guys. <gasps> yeah, especially if he's been into my basement. He oh. would have seen. Fuck, okay. He, I, I, I say, I say Vincent did rip him apart. Like, not Vincent, sorry. I do say Banana Man did rip <laughs> him apart. I agree. We, Good observation. Do you think we should uh, try and maybe stealth and do some sneaking around and see if we can find more and I guess if we're caught we just confront him yes yeah. I agree I can definitely sneak around him if you need me to you we are got some quite sneakers. sneaky yeah I'd say that's our best bet uh, I guess I turn to the lizard man and I'm like um, if Bertram becomes too comfortable in his role uh, let me know this can't happen again Hey, I'm not trying to get between you and Bert Bertram, okay? Uh, do what you gotta do. 
I am just doing my job, huh? Yes. Oh. Sort of like, I guess we turn and leave? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. should <laughs> we should go find this dude, this right. detective. As you guys are leaving, uh, Kaylee kind of hollers at you. Are you guys okay? You look kind of like, you guys look like really mad. <laughs> She's so cute. It's no worries, Kalia. You know, just uh, city stuff. The usual. Okay, well, like, if you ever need a drink, this is your place. Like, I can make you a drink. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so So Wait. true, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she waves at you, and she says, bye, see you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak, Kaylee. Yeah. As you say that, she goes, I love you. I love you so much. You're oh just, god. you're so beautiful and you're so tiny. And I just, oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Stop. No, I love you. Stop. We need Mr. to get, Queen. we need to do something together. We have to get together this weekend. Drinks. Yes. 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 Leanna. Yes. Okay. Leanna, you coming? Drinks? <laughs> yes, 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 drinks, drinks. I heard drinks in my head. I was like, yeah, drinks. Let's go. But then I forgot I have to respond. <laughs> Juniper, yes, Juniper, come on. I know you're all, you know, naturey and elfy and stuff, but like drinks? Yes, I can. I can yes, yes, drinks. yes, drinks. Esmeralda, drinks. drinks? No. Okay, next time. Esmeralda, come on, Esmeralda, drinks. Esmeralda. <laughs> She, uh, in her, like, crimson uh, dress, she is, like, leaning on the bar, uh, tapping her fingers on the bar, and uh, she just shakes her head. She says, not my scene. Sorry, oh, ladies. Damn. Esmeralda doesn't like us, guys. It's fine. It's fine. We'll have fun with Kaylee. Kaylee drinks. Yay! <laughs> All right. You guys head out, uh, leaving the crew to fix up the bar for tonight, uh, fix up the club for tonight. And your plan is to kind of sneak around uh, the, um, basically the police headquarters and try and kind of figure out what you can figure out kind of thing? Yes, 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 is yes, Is that yes, the plan, Exactly. Arc? Yeah, I think we're going to try and sneak and try and get some more information. And then if not, just go ham and banana butt his banana butt. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So, uh, as you guys head out, uh, what are your passive perceptions, please? Uh, it'll be in the it'll be in the left hand side of your character sheet, in its own little bar, the very far left, underneath your saving throws uh, box. It says passive wisdom, passive perception. It'll have a number. Fourteen. Okay, we got a fourteen. Nine. I have twelve. Nine. Twelve. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. All right. So as you guys are leaving. Uh, you head towards the, um, basically Scotland Yard, or, uh, police headquarters of this area. Um, as you're walking in that direction, you notice there aren't a whole lot of people in the streets. Um, uh, as word has spread of what happened, the, the spectacle that's been made. And, are you've, you've got a strange feeling in the pit of your stomach, one you haven't had in a long time, um, that the whole vampire thing is, is normally not talked about, uh, and not believed by many, um, but for some reason it seems like it's becoming widespread today, like people are talking about it today, the vampire thing. Um, and maybe partially that's because of what Esme said, or maybe partially that's from some other reason, you're not sure, um, but it is, it is kind of freaking people out, it seems, um, and you even see a, as you're walking towards the police station, you see rings of garlic around the doors of some people's houses. Um, you see, uh, like, no no drinks after uh, 8 p.m. when the sun goes down. You see, like, a few a few people, like, basically warding off any, any chance of a vampire showing up at their place. Uh, and as you're walking with an umbrella, uh, you uh, are able to kind of realize that there are some eyes on you. Just like, just people watching you with the umbrella, because it is raining, um, so it's not that big a deal. But um, it is... 
you know, it's just a weird time. You know, people are just eyeballing everything that seems anything off. Um, and uh, as you're walking towards the police station, a group of guards kind of line the street. As you're walking by them, they're not really paying too much attention to you. Instead, they're they're all like talking with each other, discussing with each other different things going on in the city. Um, good and rolling perception checks, everybody. As you're walking by these uh, groups of guards, just kind of lining the streets here and there. Um, of course, as you get closer to the to the guard headquarters, you're going to get more and more guards. So, uh, with these perception checks here, um, not bad. As a group, uh, you hear a few things. Uh, starting with the lowest number, which would be, um, R, you hear, um, just a small bit of discussion of the guard saying, like, how many of us do you think there are? How, how many, how many, how many do you think are in our ranks? And then you hear, uh, Esme, uh, with an 11, you hear one of the guards saying, well, they could could be anywhere. They, they could be just a, a child. What if there's a child one? What if there's a child one? Do we have to kill that one too then? Um, Juniper, you hear... I think, I mean, I'm, I kind of want to be a vampire. I, just, I don't know about you guys, but... And one of the guards, like, slaps that guy on the head. And he goes, what? What? <laughs> vampire women, they're hot. And then the other ones just go, oh my god! And they just walk away. And then Leanna, with a 15, um, you hear the most whispered and kind of quiet um, thing out of any of the guards, but you're able to just barely make it out. And you get the biggest encompassing look at the situation when you hear the words, I had no clue that Vincent was a vampire. How, how, how could we have known? Hey. I mean, I know you always take the night, night shift, but, I mean, come on. Uh, how, how could we have known? And one of the other guards, just they're just talking back and forth about it, and you're the only one who can hear it because it's just the quietest of all the conversations. Are we in a safe enough distance that we cannot be heard if we talk? You are not. You would need to kind of uh, either dip into one of the nearby buildings. Uh, there are a few abandoned buildings around or, um, like, a, a nearby bar or tavern. Um, or you would need to kind of sneak down one of the alleyways. For I okay, I take this information and I need to let them know. So I signal them like, let's go. Okay, so Leanna's like signaling you all to um, what do you want to do, Leanna? Abandoned building, alleyway, or tavern? Uh, let's go to this abandoned building because I don't want to risk any guards hearing us. Okay. So Leanna kind of waves you all over to what looks like a, a fairly boarded up kind of abandoned marble building. Um, and she sneaks around the side. Um, everyone go ahead and roll me a stealth check as you're trying to get into a spot where you can talk without being heard. Oof. You win some, you, you lose know, some. I need it some bad luck, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, as you guys are about to enter into the abandoned building, um, Esme, you're stealthy enough to fly directly under the door. Nobody sees you. Um, the rest of you, though, are Juniper and Leanna as you're about to open the door to go inside. Um, Esme, you hear from the other side of the door. Hey, hold there! Hey! That's what you hear on the, the other side of the door. You're already inside, Esme. Um, the rest of you turn around. You're still outside. You look and see... Uh, a couple guards kind of waving you down. Um, what are you doing here? Hey! No, it's it's fine. I'm um, looking at this building to buy, uh, you know, expansion business. Uh, maybe I'll open a pub. This area of the city's closed. On whose authority? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Detective mm, Monkey Man. No, come again? Detective Monkey Butt! Do you know who I am, perchance? Uh, what I've done for this city, especially regarding vampires. He, uh, he kind of, like, tries to look at you through his helmet and kind of lifts it up so you can see his face. He's just a young human. Um, he says, 
No, I, I don't know who you are. Well, let me educate you, sir. Um, I, you know, when we had a vast, large vampire problem, was, uh, you know, the sole person responsible for clearing it out and making sure this city is safe, and I'll do so again if I have to. But I am trustworthy, I am an upstanding citizen, more than probably yourself, and I'm here to look at this building to purchase. Now, if you'll excuse me. Roll me... Let's start with an intimidation check. Okay. Or persuasion, your choice. Uh, they're both plus seven. So whatever you so, want to do in this situation, okay, whatever you're feeling. I feel like maybe intimidation. He is only a young person, so, okay. Oh, oh my come God. on, what are these rolls? Hello? Um, what the hell? It's like. You're giving all, you know, like, like, Angelic is, like, sucking all the She's lock out of She's sucking all the lock. <laughs> <laughs> She's the vampire. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's cool. Um, so, with that, uh, he doesn't seem too intimidated, but maybe if you're good enough at lying to him here, uh, he'll, uh, he'll at least believe you. So, um, let's do a deception check. Does anybody want to help R in this situation, give her advantage? Um, am I technically deceiving him though? Because I am telling the truth. That you're going to buy the building? Oh, I guess no. I was doing <laughs> the vampire stuff. Yeah. But, can I just be yeah. in the background? Like, yeah, dude, not cool. Do you know who she is? That's just not cool of you. All right, you fly out from under the uh, <laughs> the door and up and start giving a thumbs up, like, like, like this is the plan. Like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Go ahead and roll advantage uh, on this one, R. Girls support girls nodders. <laughs> what's up, oh, human? I wrote it on the wrong place. We're playing D&D. &D, that's what's going on. Uh, did that come up? Okay. I wrote it on D&D &D Beyond instead of uh, the other one. Oh. Because I'm not sure how to roll it with. Uh, uh, if you do shift click, it'll it'll roll it with advantage. If I get lower than a 26, I'm going to be very upset. Right. <laughs> that's what I rolled. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's see what it rolls. Let's get the nat 20. No. Yeah, we'll take the 26. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. But now you know for the future. So, yeah. uh, with the 26, uh, he, he kind of nods his head. He says, okay, well, sorry, but you seriously, you've got to go. You can't, you can't be around here. Okay. Uh, you can come look back at the building another day. Today's not a good day. Hmm. You'll be hearing from my people about this, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your job. He uh, he kind of like scratches his neck. Um, roll me uh, roll me an intimidation again. Okay. This will kind of be like advantage, like late advantage. Nice. Okay. Uh, he rolls a twelve. He says. Okay, please don't tell my boss, okay? Uh, I, I, I'm sure you're a huge big shot around here, and you all seem very capable, okay? Uh, Thanks. I'm... I didn't see anything. Did you see anything? And uh, he, he says that to, to another guard who's kind of a few feet back, and the guard just kind of shrugs his shoulders, and he says, I don't get paid enough to see anything. Yeah, <laughs> period, king. <laughs> so they, they both walk away, uh, one, one a bit more scared than the other. You guys are able to go into the abandoned house without uh, anyone else noticing you, for the most part. Um, there, Leanna can kind of spill the beans on what she heard. Okay, so I have really bad memory, but if I remember correctly, I think they were talking about how they found out that he was a vampire and that they didn't know. And so if he, they're like, oh, snap, he's a vampire. How did we not know this? And they know that he was a vampire. And was that like... Was that released? Like that information released that that guy was a vampire, Vincent? Does everyone know Vincent's a vampire? Uh, everyone in your party does. You're not sure if it's everyone in the city. Ever the guards? Do the guards know? It like, seems like they all do. They, so, but before his death, did they know? No. Probably not before his death. You would have heard about oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So for some reason, my brain was like, they found out that he was a vampire and like killed him for that. Mm. Okay, so they were just like, we didn't know he was a vampire, and they were talking about it, and like. Now I kind of forgot what they said a little bit. But... I mean, you pretty much got it. They were, they were scared, 
because he was a vampire. They, they were like, they were nervous about how many of them are in the ranks. Um, and you get the idea that the detective having uh, kind of listened to what Esme said and maybe had his own suspicions about vampires, probably told the whole guard after he looked at the body, he probably told them all like, hey, this is a vampire and he was one of you and you should all be scared kind of thing. He probably, uh, he, see? He probably did that. Yeah, see, when I heard that, I thought that they were like, oh, he was a vampire. Like, they killed him because he was a vampire. I misheard, and I got way too excited. No, 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 that's okay. Damn. You're on the right track, though. So, with that said, you have more kind of eyes on the situation. The whole vampire thing, once it spreads to the guards, it's going to spread to the people. That's how it works. So, that's probably why people are boarding up their houses doing those kinds of things, because it seems like most of the city now knows that there was a vampire in the guards, which makes everyone feel unsafe. So it wasn't the guards or anyone in there, but damn, maybe we should well, go you're back. You're not sure. You're not sure. Ah. It definitely could have been, it could have been, you know, some guards that found out before everyone else and just killed him, you know, and, that's and what made I an thought. example that's out what of I, it. Yeah, definitely see, that's could what be. I was thinking. Definitely happened, could be. But... Yeah, that's, that honestly doesn't sound off. Hmm. Definitely could. Be. I mean, and they're definitely eager to kill vampires as well because they were talking about killing children back there for being vampires. True. Does Vincent? Do we know if Vincent has any like major enemies, or if there's anybody who really, really, really hates vampires? Um, R, you know that Vincent has a girlfriend, but uh, you're not sure who she is. You don't really talk well. about those kinds of things. He, he had a girlfriend, I think, but I never met her. I don't know her name. Um, but uh, this is bad for me. I If Banana Bot suspects me, even in the slightest of making Vincent, uh, we need to kill him. Or do something. Un, un, you know, make him just a normal chimpanzee again. Anything. Hmm. Well, then we need to find who made him intelligent. I think we should go to where he works and just sneak around there, see what we can find about him. You are nearby already. Okay. If that is the plan. Yeah, I think we should stick to the plan. Okay. I'm not sure if it's a good idea for me to go in. I think if he takes one look at me, it'll be... Uh an issue, but I could maybe distract him while you guys search. Uh, honestly, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. You so could maybe go in on the pretense of this vampire issue, as I am one of the main people they come to usually with the vampire problem, but... Yeah. Um, some of the guards definitely know you from this uh, from this issue. Um, and even, uh, even Detective Monkey Butt may know you from this, uh, particular, uh, thing that you do, um, as in being one of the, uh, the pr primary, uh, fighters of vampires of the city. Um, so, as you guys all leave the abandoned house, you head over to the guard station, of which there are many guards all around. Um, a few of them recognize you are, and, uh, you hear some whispers of, like, She's back! She's back! Oh, she's here! She's gonna help us out! Oh, she's the best we've got! Ah, she is! Like, uh, just a few people, like, shouting, um, you know, just happy to see you. A few people, who's that? Who, 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 who are you talking about? And, uh, which one? The small one? The flying one? No, 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 I don't know who that is. I'm talking about the one... And they're kind of, like, talking about your group of people that are walking right now. Um... With that said, you're able to walk your way all the way up to the uh, the main doors of the uh, guard barracks, which from there, uh, there are two guards standing in front of the door. One of which knows you. Uh, you've seen this one before. You don't know his name. He's just a, a standard bugbear. So he's like a, a large, very large, um, kind of Sasquatch-looking creature in marble armor. Uh, and you do know him. The other one you're not you're not very familiar with. Uh, seems like he's a gnome, very short, uh, probably two and a half feet tall, uh, stacked up in his own little marble armor. He's got a crossbow on his back. 
The bugbear has no weapons, um, but his claws are covered in marble. And uh, the bugbear says, Hi. Ah, it's good to see you. Um, what, uh, what do you know? You already know about the situation? Yeah, I'm here to try and stop this before it becomes an issue. Hey, vampires in the ranks, that's, uh, that's a major issue. Yeah, I was worried about you a few months ago, a couple months ago. Uh, the detective came back for a warrant for the club, but, um, he, uh, he couldn't get it. <laughs> yes, that detective, uh, he seems to be going down the wrong path. Yeah, I, uh, I'm worried about him, you know, he's been, uh, he's been caught up in work for a long time, but I guess it's paying yeah. off now. <laughs> no, someone outside of my club said he was, uh, drunk and disorderly the other night, actually. Oh, really? Like he's, uh, when? unraveling. Would have been last night. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and he, the, so do you, do you tell the guard that? When? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to basically plant the, he's, he's, he's unraveling scene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, uh, he came back, uh, last night, he wasn't drunk at all. Oh, well, I was told he was, uh, very drunk last night. No, not a single, uh, not a single skip to a step. He seemed yeah. totally normal. Did he, uh, change his clothes, by chance? No. Mm. No, he seemed, uh, he seemed totally normal, actually. Uh, that's very strange. Um, uh, I think you got bad information. Yes, that, or maybe there's a, a second. Uh... Banana butt? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that! I don't think the magician did that trick more than once before he was shooed out of the city. So, uh, as he says that, he says, Well, I mean, he's not here if, if that's what you, uh, if that's who you're looking for. The detective's mm. not here. Mm, no, I, I, he, detective not, is not necessary. Uh, I'm going to just, you know, see if I can make a start on my investigation. Okay. Um,. You think, uh, I mean, is it okay? Uh, what orders did you get? He looks down at the gnome. The gnome says, Nobody allowed in. Sorry. I hate that gnome already. <laughs> How am I supposed to uh, stop the vampire threat if you're not going to let me in? We were given a small list of people who are allowed to come in and you're not on the list. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe you should check again. I sort of like lean over him. <laughs> All right, roll me an intimidation check. <laughs> Twenty-three. The uh, the gnome kind of looks at his list, and uh, then he looks back up at you, and he takes a little quill out of his pocket and writes the word R on the list and closes it. <laughs> oh, you're on the list! Look at that. <laughs> Steps aside. The big bugbear steps aside too. So the uh, they open the doors for you, and you head into the guard barracks, of which um, fairly empty. Surprisingly, most of the guards are outside. Uh, none, none really in here. You see a secretary kind of sitting at the front. You're familiar with her. Um, she uh, she is a um, small goblin who kind of like run, runs the books and uh, just makes sure that uh, the guards are go like going on their correct shifts and things like that. Um, she's got a little time punch card thing on her table that she's using to check guards in and out. But again, there's no real no guards in here. Um, as you come in, she says, Oh, it's good to see you again there. Ah, it's, uh, of course, um, you've got a new group with you. Uh, more vampire hunters, are they? Yes, sir. Uh, the best, actually. Oh, well, we could use you today, girl. I'm telling you. She kind of gets up out of the, out of the chair. Uh, as she does, she plops down to the ground. She's probably two feet tall, so she, like, she plops down under the desk and then walks around the side of the desk so you can see her. Um, her big floppy ears kind of, like, wave from side to side. She's got earrings that go all the way down both ears. Uh, her little purple dress that she's wearing is very low cup to kind of show her, her bosom, and, um, she's very, very friendly, um, and she, uh, she says, um, is there anything uh, I can help you with? Uh, is there, you have specific orders, or, um, obviously they let you in, so you're on the list. Yes, I'm, uh, well, I'm I'm starting my investigation, you see, you know, having a vampire in the ranks, ranks was a shock to us all, but I'm, I'm wondering, you know them all quite well, do you know, uh, who would you say is, you know, 
most potentially, you know, to be a vampire. I mean... Anyone that just picks up night shifts. Uh... We have a lot of people on night shifts. I mean, <laughs> it's it's hard to say. Um, I mean, I've always been suspicious of Bruce, but maybe just because he smells bad, he's got B.O. Hmm. Is there anyone that exclusively does night shifts? Could you get me a list? Um, sure, yeah, uh, I can do that. Um, just one thing. Um, you weren't on the list. Oh, what are you doing here? She kind of um, has a very serious look on her face. I kind of like give like a, a sincere look, and I'm like, y you know me. I, I I'm worried for the city. I'm I'm here to do what I always do when vampire threat comes knocking, and I'm going to stop it. And I'm not going to be stopped from stopping it from those potentially in the force that would try and stop me. This is a sensitive investigation, R, and you're bringing these people in here? It's reckless! Yes. Mm. Some may say reckless, but I get results. I'm, I'm going to help you with this, but you owe me. I do, I do owe you. You're right. She uh, goes back to her desk gets a list of the night shift guards and hands it to you. Um, and she says, I'm going to cash in this favor. Okay? Don't make me lose my job over this. I would never. Okay. The rest of you, don't touch anything. Yes, ma'am. She nods her head. <laughs> All right, um, you have free reign over the guard barracks here, which is uh, basically a, a large, almost prison slash police station. Um, for the most part, it is fairly open and I don't have a map for you. I don't have anything super drawn out for you. What I want you to do is just tell me what you're looking for and uh, I'll let you know based on some rolls if you find it. You kind of have free reign because there's not very many people here, um, which is surprising by the way. It might, might be something you could ask about. Yeah, I'd be like, um, where is everyone? Uh, banana butt, uh, most of the guards, are they anywhere particular? I'm, I'm not allowed to say, are. Can I, like, hand, like, slide her a bit of gold on the, the table if she's gone back? I'd be like, oh, come on. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. All right, with a 20, she uh, she takes the gold. She says, it was a big, big troop that he took out and I'm not exactly sure where they went, um, but I have a feeling I know. He's been trying to get it for a long time. You know he has, I'm sorry. look at the rest of them and I'm like uh, I think I have to leave hmm. I I'm sorry Ah. I'm sorry wait what I'm sure there's nothing to find right I mean you've got nothing to hide there's nothing to find I assure you I'm just <sighs> you do a lot for your city and this is what you... they give you in return I'm disappointed that's all he's they're relentless. He's not going to stop until he finds what he wants. He's looking in the wrong place. I believe you. Uh, would you let my friends search? Uh, well, you know, look for some some leads while I uh, go attend to my business. I won't leave them here with without you. I'm sorry. What if I uh, could persuade you and I sort of like slide her some more gold? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, no, I don't know these people. You can stay in search with them and then you can go. Or you can go now. I guess. This is supposed to be a hard decision. Okay. Oh, out of character, do I, like, obviously I told, like, Esmeralda and all that lot, uh, long, like, all those months ago to like scrub things down and like yep. keep things non-vampiric for like a yep. while 
uh, would I like is that still going on or um f- for the most part yeah um <laughs> they and until you like I think R is a very careful person so I doubt R would let let things go um for a while yeah. at least until you knew that the threat was clear kind of thing and okay. uh I don't think you'd give it I don't think you'd make it as quick as a month or two. I think you'd I think you'd give it more time. At least that's what I get from R's character. But you can decide yeah. whether or not you would have been lenient after whatever amount of time. Yeah, no, I probably I probably wouldn't have like R probably wouldn't have uh let things go unless something came of it, I think. Yeah. Because Banana Bot seems annoyingly persistent. <laughs> right. Um Is so... there any way Esme could hide, like behind? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Of of the characters of you, um, you and Esme could probably could hide the easiest. Uh, yeah. um, there are small creatures that you could shapeshift into, uh, Juniper, if you wanted to stick behind, too. Mm, okay. Could we maybe try that? And then, uh, like, we can, like, pretend like we leave and then, you know, more yeah. or whatever, or hide. That's most certainly an option if you'd like to do that. Risky okay. though, very risky. Yeah. But I'm I guess also willing. though, I'm not really sure what I can do anyway. If they're searching the nightclub, hello, cat. <laughs> yeah, because like <laughs> if you go back, like I don't know, that could also look suspicious to them. Yeah, it might be best just to cut my losses of that and search with you yeah. guys, and then maybe go back after. Okay, so I think we're sticking together. Then is the plan. For now? Yeah. All right, everybody. Tell me what information you're looking for, and then uh, we can roll it. And you can we can have four different things here. You can all four be looking for different things, and we can roll, or you can all look for the same thing and have a higher chance of finding it, or you know, two and two and have you know medium chances of finding it, kind of thing. So. Yeah, I feel like maybe we should take like particular care with like Banana Bot's office and like look uh-huh. for specific information. Like maybe look for you know any sign of if he did kill Vincent or like just what he's up to what his plans are maybe if he even knows where his maker is because that would be useful hmm. okay I can I can look for um, where his maker is I can focus on that one All right. does anyone want to double the odds of that by searching for it as well or do we want to look for different things I can go okay so Liana and Esme will search for um, Monkey Butt's magic creator, the person who turned him into a uh, into a detective, basically turned him into a sentient creature. Um, you'll look for that person's information or some kind of uh, any any leads on where they they might be to be able to maybe uh, use them against Mister Mon- uh, Mister Banana Butt. And then uh, R and Juniper, what are you two? thinking about in terms of this investigation that you want to know I I want to know if he like if he killed Vincent and like what he is doing like what he if he did like what he's up to okay so like clues information clues yeah. about Vincent's death mm-hmm. okay and then Juniper can since they're like teaming up with two can I help R with yeah. also looking for clues okay yeah so now the last thing to decide is Liana and um, Esme, do you want to roll separately or does one of you have a better chance of finding it and you want to just do advantage on one of you? Like um, I have plus six because it's investigation, Investigation, right? correct. Okay, yeah, I have plus six. Liana, what's your investigation bonus? Did it go? Because I'm using my Wacom, so this thing, like, does not work sometimes. Okay, yeah, it uh, it did work. So we got a 16 from Liana. Go ahead and roll uh, Esme. Okay. Investigation. 23. Okay, nice. nice. We'll come back to you in a second. Um, now, R and Juniper, do you uh, want to share the roles? One. What, what's, what's Juniper's investigation? Um, it's plus three. Okay, so I'll... I'll just assist you if you want to roll with advantage. Okay. All right. So do shift click on investigation for um, Juniper. (laughs) 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 You guys in your natural 20s. Okay. All 
All right. So, um, with these roles, Esme, Liana, Juniper, and R. As you're looking through, first thing that we're looking for is the location or the name or the um, whereabouts or something for whoever created Banana Butt. As you go into his office, um, Esme, you're able to actually just kind of sneak under the door um, without anyone really noticing. And as you search through the office, you kind of flip through a few different business cards on uh, Detective's desk. And as you do, you find one that kind of stands out in particular. It's in its own little plastic wrapping, and it, it seems a bit special uh, from the rest of them. It has writing all over it. Um, words like, I hate you, and uh, piece of shit, where the name is crossed out and it just says piece of shit, uh, special magician, uh, things like that. Um, notes written on it, no, like tally marks, looks like a bunch of tally marks on it as well. Um, carefully preserved, though. And there is a little uh, magical insignia at the bottom of the of the business card that seems like it is used to contact the uh, magician. Um, you're not sure how to work it because you're not really a magic person, but uh, it seems like it has unlimited uses for contact to this person by uh, anyone who can use the rune. So it's just like a magical symbol almost that you can like rub and talk to uh, talk to the person on the other end. It's kind of like a walkie talkie. Okay. So um, you're not sure how to use it, but uh, maybe Juniper, Liana, or R might. Okay. Um, I'll hold it for now so I can take it to them. Okay. And then um, as you've got that Juniper, as you're looking around for clues on what might have happened to Vincent, you're kind of flipping through some papers on one of the desks and underneath a large blueprint of R's club, you see a, a small notebook. And first thing you notice, R, the blueprints are not correct. Uh, they don't have the basement at all listed on the uh, on the blueprints. Um, they don't have some of the VIP rooms. They seem old and they seem uh, not just not correct. Whoever made the blueprints as either someone who doesn't know your club or someone who hasn't seen all of your club. Um, secondly, the notebook that you find, Juniper. Inside this notebook is handwriting. Um, you're not sure of whose, um, mm -hmm. but it seems like a list of names and the name Vincent is crossed off. Is the the name R is not crossed off, but it's right above Vincent's. Underneath Vincent's is a few other names of random people with question marks next to them. And above R's are more names, um, but they, they don't have question marks. So basically you've got a list of um, names that kind of look like just like I don't know, does that show in chat? I mean, uh, it doesn't really show, but like, it's just like a, a list with a mm -hmm. bunch of names. Then you see R and you see Vincent and then everything underneath them has question marks like uh, yeah, next to each name. So um, it doesn't, it's not a titled list, but uh, it does definitely does seem like it is somewhat important. And Vincent's name is the only one that's mm -hmm. crossed off. Okay. Okay. So you can nab that. Um, Roll me a stealth check, Juniper, to be able to nab it if you want it. Otherwise, if you don't want it, you can just walk I, away from uh... it. All right. Let me roll for the secretary. She's busy. She's not noticing. Oh, um, okay. You guys get a good amount of information from this uh, little venture that you've gone on, but obviously... The detective would be smart enough to not really leave too much behind. What is your plan next? I'm gonna. 
I imagine I saw the notebook as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of look at the, the group and I'm like, I don't know if it's the best idea I go back to the club. Um, I, I'm kind of... Am I speaking... Like, Is the secretary like listening in? Can I... Like... She is within earshot. Okay. Um, I think I'll uh, get my lawyers involved on this. Uh, We'll have to visit them personally and get them up to date on this and uh, also try and investigate some of the night team while I'm at it. Uh, shall we leave? Yes, we should definitely leave. Sure. Uh, before I like leave, I go to the receptionist and I say, uh, I was never here. The uh, receptionist nods and uh, her, her earrings kind of jangle as she does. And she says, don't forget you owe me. I definitely do. I definitely do. And um, I leave. And I guess as I leave, we know the guy that wrote my name mm -hmm. on the list to come in. I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, you can go ahead and cross me off the list. But I wrote it in pen. Cross me off the list. Ah! <laughs> he crumples up the list and throws it. Aww. <laughs> okay. As, I guess as soon as we're... Are we allowed to go back to the abandoned building, I guess? Now that we've um, been there before? Or... You may have to kind of sneak in again because uh, there be, might be other guards that see you. Yeah, um, maybe the other two. I guess if there's an alleyway. Yeah, yeah, an alleyway would work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I sort of kind of usher everyone into the alleyway and I'm like, this is very bad. I think he knows. And I don't think it's best that I go back to the club. I think... I think our best bet is to maybe unmake Banana Butt. Mm -hmm. Nothing would make me happier than making him a stupid monkey again. <laughs> well, I did find this, and then I want to pull out the card and show it to them. All right. You see the uh, you see the card, everyone. Uh, the name is hard to tell because it's crossed off and just uh, you know written with obscenities uh, above it. Um, but you do see uh, the the magical symbols, Juniper. Leanna and R, you recognize these symbols as uh, communication symbols that you could use. Uh, anyone with a magical affinity would be able to use to contact him. And uh, you're just not sure what his name is. It's just hard to tell. It's contact him with so this. Crossed uh, off. I think we should do that. And maybe uh, I have the list of night crew. I could maybe start turning some night crew. You know. Get banana bud off my trail by uh, creating fledgling vampires and he'll have to deal with them instead of me hmm. okay so how are we gonna contact this um magician uh, can i like i guess i go to like take the card mm -hmm. from whoever has it if they'll let me have it um Absolutely, yeah you can have it <laughs> um okay and then i'm I guess I'm a warlock. Would I know how to yeah. how this works? Yeah. Uh, okay, perfect. Basically, you just yeah. rub your thumb over it and talk into it, um, but you just have to give a little bit of your own magic into it. Yeah, I'll I'll do that, and I'll be like, uh, I, you don't know me, but I think I know of you, and I'm in need of your help. I have things that may interest you and valuable things to give you in return. If we could meet, that would be highly. I'd be highly grateful. As you say that, you wait for a moment, and then you hear, in kind of a muffled tone, coming from the from the card itself, you hear it kind of in a muffled tone. You have reached the voicemail mailbox of four zero six six five four three two two two, and then it just goes. I guess I leave that message. All right, again. you leave the message. <laughs> and I, I add, I'm, I can uh, undo a mistake that had you run out of town. Okay. So as you say that, um, you you hear a voice that says, Message received. It sounds like a very different kind of almost Russian type voice. Um, I can't talk now, but I will... Uh... I'll contact you. Do you say anything, anything back? As soon as possible, if you would. No response. Um, but as you say that, 
the the night is drawing near and uh people are kind of walking by a person kind of walks by the alleyway and uh they, they look down the alleyway and see you um seems like a regular city goer but uh someone who you you've seen before someone who frequents the club um as they say hey ar where where have you been the club's closed are you opening up tonight or no I like usher him in to the alley okay um can i quietly just turn this man into a vampire <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, as you know, oh turning someone into a vampire is a violent and uh, a violent and loud process. One that okay. is best covered up with club music. Uh huh. Um, so probably not. Uh, oh, what are we doing? Are we huddling? Uh, I can huddle with you. Yeah, I'm uh, just. I'm. I'm gonna give you. You're a. You're a regular club goer. I'm gonna give you some. Some inside information. Ooh, uh, I like it. Yeah, we've got a, a really amazing par- party like event coming up. Uh, but here's here's the thing. Uh, you can't say that you saw me because I am on a secret mission to get some special booze that's not allowed in the city. Roll me a deception check. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? <laughs> that was a nat one. <laughs> He, he kind of like raises an eyebrow and he starts backing away and he's like, I, I don't know what, what all this is about, but I'm sure it's fine. You have fun. Ah, uh, whatever. Oh boy. He starts kind of walking away. Mm-hmm. You want to stop him or do you want to? It's fine I if you don't. I kind of do. I kind of do want to stop him. Can I like? You're surrounded by guards, like not directly, but uh, just they're just around, you know, not, in the can area. They see me? They're just in the <laughs> am area. I like, am I like in the dark enough that if I were to like potentially stab this man or, or behead him quite quickly, that nobody would notice? Probably. Uh, roll me a roll me a stealth check. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and kill him like straight off. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and grab him and then see if I'm. See if I'm seen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Walking out. You cannot roll above a ten tonight, man. I. Uh, I grab him and I and I. Help! Like, I pass. I like. I'm like. No, no. It's fine. It's fine. And I like. I like pat his chest. And while I'm patting his chest, I like. I give him some gold, like oh, a okay. pouch of gold, and I'm like. Off you go. Have a great night. <laughs> Roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> Fuck out. <laughs> this is going down with me. <laughs> Come on, what? above a ten. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you hand him the gold and he goes, huh, help me. I'm rich. I'm rich. And he starts running off. <laughs> okay, so of the gold you've used today, go ahead and mark like 30 gold off your sheet, we'll say. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, as you do that, um, you can, you kind of take a breath for a second. And all of you, except for R, because uh, R is kind of distracted, all of you, Liana, Esme, Juniper, you hear the sound of, like, a church gong going off behind you, but it's not super loud. It's kind of just like a boom. Boom. And as you all three turn, you see a kind of almost translucent. So I'm talking almost see-through. You see a what looks like a cellar door in the alleyway floor. It's it's kind of shimmering in the in the the moonlight here, and it's made of gold. And it opens up seemingly to nowhere there there should be i mean that is the concrete that is the marble floor i mean there should be nowhere to go but like this like translucent almost ghostly golden door has opened on the floor for you to walk into oh yes Um, maybe that's our friend i'm i'm gonna walk down i'm uh... I'm you like, actually don't see it at the moment. You don't see it at the moment. Oh, okay. Or you're the only one who doesn't see it because you're kind of distracted. <laughs> the the rest of you recognize this 
Um, this is your chance. This is your sign that the dagger is near. Yeah, I'm basically going to start, like, flying down it as fast as possible. Because I feel like everything going on right now has Esme, like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, so with, with all the vampires and stuff. So she's right. like, finally, something I recognize. Right. For and, real. and you were so distracted by the drama of what was going on here that you had your characters had completely forgotten about what you were doing. And that's what triggered the dagger to reveal itself to you. Um, you know this dra dagger to be tricky. You know it to hide itself. So it is not going to be easy to find. Even if you, even though you have the door open to you right now, it's not going to be an easy grab. But um, you're one step closer as you've gotten to the point where you were so distracted that the dagger um, revealed itself to you, um, ready to be found by you. Uh, so now it's up to you to face the uh, to face the. The temple ahead um it's it's all a mystery to you all of it you have no clue what's ahead um but you know that even though you guys are confused ours probably even more confused as she watches <laughs> you walk into the like the marble concrete mm -hmm. and like disappear like um from harry potter you guys know where they go into the pillar to go to hogwarts you know what i'm talking about platform nine and three quarters that's basically mm, yeah that's basically what just happened um, or you see them kind of disappear into the concrete. Um, and as you get closer, you notice uh, this kind of shimmering translucent door um, that you see them uh, kind of walking down this dark passageway into the abyss of somewhere. And they hadn't even, they didn't even really say anything to you. They just, they just did it. Um, they've sort of mentioned why they're here, but not really. And so you're still unsure of, of where they're going or what they're doing. Um, but you're about to be left here in the alleyway as the doors are shutting yeah I'm like fuck this shit I'm out as well I'll... <laughs> it's the perfect I'll, like, time to... for R to go missing it's the perfect time yes. <laughs> so R you uh, you quickly uh, shimmy your way through the door and down into the abyss with the rest of your party as the doors <laughs> shut above you leaving you all in a dark abyss with nothing around you, no sound, but your own breathing. No rain, the rain disappears, the sounds of the city disappear into nothingness. And that's where we'll pick up next time. Oh. In the black abyss <laughs> of chaos. Yeah, I'm so excited. That sounds cool. <laughs> Like, and... If we can make banana butt stupid, nothing will make me happier. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll focus on that too. I feel like Esme is just like, thank fucking God. Like <laughs> she was waiting for this. Yep. This was, uh, this was a pretty, um, like it made sense for you being distracted enough with all this drama. I mean, you guys were so caught up I in know. it that the daggers like, let's, let's do this thing. Um, finally distracted enough. Finally forgot about me. Um, yeah. which is what it was looking for. So um, with that said, I'm going to raid into someone. Um, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for the uh, the wonderful episode. I hope you guys had some fun. We are going hard, to, um, next when we finish this little dungeon, we're going to level you guys up a few levels because um, I would like to, to get you guys into the double digits levels, maybe level 10 here coming up pretty soon. So we're going to skip a few levels to make this interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll do that uh, after you finish the next little dungeon that you're set up into. Yay! Uh, any good. questions? Anything anyone wants to say before I raid into, let's Question. say... If I were to make Bun on a Butt stupid, can I keep him <laughs> as a pet afterwards? Possibly. <laughs> let's go! Possibly. Ultimate revenge. <laughs> that would be the ultimate revenge.